All right, if you're just tuning in, um, hey mamas, it's your Cajun Stork here, midwife Kyra. Today, we're gonna be talking about safe immune system supplements for pregnancy, the COVID edition. Um, as you probably already know, if you're familiar with me, I am a practicing midwife in Louisiana. I run a birth center in Lafayette, Louisiana, and I'm an owner of another birth center in Louisiana in Covington, or we call it North Shore Birth House. Um, I am not an herbalist, so let's start with that disclaimer. Um, but, you know, being a midwife uh, and a natural health care provider, um, I just really have a passion for using supplements and nutrition to um, support our health. And so I put together this information this week while I was actually at home suffering from COVID, um, doing my own research for myself and for my clients who were coming down with COVID during the fourth wave. So if you are a pregnant mama or a lactating mama, get yourself a pen and paper because I have some things going to be sharing with you. And then after today's uh, video, I am going to be posting this on YouTube and leaving it live on Facebook for probably about a day or so. Um, to give you guys an opportunity to learn a little more. Um, one of the things I want to say too is thankfully Facebook has taken down showing me how many people are logging on live, which I love, but I can't see your comments live either. So if you have any questions throughout the video, feel free to go ahead and post them as you have them. At the end of the video, I'm going to open up my phone and read any questions and hopefully provide you guys with some answers for that. Um, so let's start off with the basic disclaimers. The information that I'm providing today is not a substitute for medical advice from your physician or from your midwife. That anything I talk to you guys about today, I really want you to touch base with your healthcare providers first. I'm providing this just as a helpful tool to other pregnant mamas who might benefit from my midwifery knowledge the same way that our clientele does. Um, remember though, as a midwife, I provide care for low-risk, healthy pregnant women and their healthy babies. So the information in this video is geared towards those women. So if you find yourself with preeclampsia, high blood pressure, diabetes, the information in this video may not apply to you. So please keep that in mind along the way. Um, another thing I want to say is this video does not talk about the COVID vaccine or non-vaccinating in any way, and I won't be discussing that in the comments. I don't want this video to become some kind of a controversy. I really, really want to help women. And so if you have any questions about that, please keep those to yourself or ask your healthcare provider, um, but we won't be addressing those today. Um, let me peek and make sure that my sound is working and everything's functioning um because i have no feedback on my screen with the new update with facebook all right julia christy and courtney hey thanks for posting letting me know that my sound's working if it's not i expect one of you to text me privately and let me know my sound is not working all right so let's get started um i don't know if this is a midwifery thing or a kyra thing but um, I'm a pretty aggressive healer, and I personally prefer supplements and nutrition. Um, when it comes to healing the body, I'm all about putting in as many as we need to get it to its optimal state of health. I realize that not everyone's like that. So at the end of this video, um, I'm going to be giving you guys a day in the life of a COVID pregnant woman. Um, on what I would recommend that you take and the regimen that you would take it. And it can be a lot and I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. So again, get a sheet of pen, uh, a sheet of paper, grab a pen, um, and hopefully that'll help. But I'm going to give you a lot of supplements today and exactly how to use them closer to the end of the video. Um, as you know, I believe in truly natural birth because I know that it makes for better birth experiences. I also believe in truly natural health because I know that putting ourselves in a good nutritional status can really make a difference in our outcomes. So general immune system preparations for pregnancy. These are things that every pregnant woman needs to be doing, whether or not it's COVID season, um, to be keeping themselves healthy and preventing disease. Considering that you're pregnant for nine months um, and most of us will be dealing with flu season, whooping cough season, um, and currently COVID. And so these are things you need to be putting into effect. Number one, water. It sounds so simple, but you would not believe how many of my clients I have to counsel on their water intake. So an easy way to remember how much water you need is take your weight in pounds 
divided by two, and that's how many ounces of water you need every single day when you're pregnant. The only thing that I'll allow you to substitute in place of water would be like red raspberry leaf tea. If you're a coffee drinker, that does not count as a water intake um, or carbonated water. I don't really count that either. I know you're supposed to be able to, but I personally want you drinking water. There's actually different types of water too. So my two recommendations would be spring water. I'm talking like if you're local, like Kentwood, like not spring water from the grocery store in a bottle, but like a local spring. Or you can get reverse osmosis water and add some drops of trace minerals to them so that you can have all of the uh, nutrition that you need. So either spring or reverse osmosis water, please don't be drinking tap water all day long when you're pregnant unless you truly have no other options in your area. Um, you can get reverse osmosis water from some of the local uh, stores even, or you can buy a tank online. Speaking of online, all of the supplements and the studies I'm going to mention today will be found in the description after this video on my YouTube channel. So if you're looking for how to find trace minerals or what that even means, um, you'll be able to find that here soon after this video. Number two, exercise to a sweat. 30 minutes, three times a week. Not only is this good for your body, but it also helps to reduce your stress levels and anxiety levels in pregnancy, particularly during COVID. Now, exercising to a sweat, if you have the opportunity, I would love for you to do this outside. Spending time outdoors can be a tremendous health booster uh, while you're pregnant, not to mention vitamin D, which I'm going to touch on in just a minute. And so getting some fresh air, reconnecting with nature, and heck, even if you have the opportunity to be barefoot, spend some time outside. So again, 30 minutes, three times a week. And if you're in South Louisiana, like we are, where it's super hot, you're going to be sweating a lot. Be sure to increase your hydration on those days. Number three, while we're talking about spending time outdoors, let's talk about vitamin D levels. So it is not common for your healthcare practitioner to check your vitamin D levels at the beginning of pregnancy. However, there are so, so many benefits to having normal vitamin D levels in your pregnancy. And I'm going to touch on those in just a couple of minutes. Um, getting your vitamin D levels checked, it costs like $40. It's very uh, inexpensive and can give you a whole lot of information about your upcoming health. So I don't want to jump into too much and spoil the fun right now about vitamin D, but that is one of the things that we have discussed implementing in our practice routinely um, because it just makes such a benefit. And believe it or not, despite living in South Louisiana, so many pregnant women are deficient in vitamin D. We're working indoors. It's too hot to wear uh, to go outside without sunscreen. Um, we're usually covered up when we're outside, trying not to burn. And so low vitamin D is actually very common even in our area. Number four, I know you mamas love your gummy prenatals, but you really need to be taking a whole food prenatal vitamin. The one that I recommend is Garden of Life. It is a whole food based prenatal vitamin, which means your body absorbs it better and processes it better. And you'll actually receive the nutrition from the vitamin. The gummies are great if you can't tolerate anything, but if you switch to um, Garden of Life, they actually have some things in it that can help you tolerate the vitamin better if you find that you're not very tolerant of prenatals. So if you're gonna bother taking a prenatal, I want you to take a whole food prenatal vitamin, which I'm gonna link in the description below after this video. Number five, maximize your sleep. We all forget about how important sleep is, but if you're pregnant, you're making another tiny little human life, not to mention red blood cells, amniotic fluid, all the things that you're working really hard to do and sleep plays such an important factor in your health. So eight to 10 hours a night, usually, and it's best if you can get to sleep around 10 p.m. or sooner. Between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., your body goes through a healing process, and it's really important that you optimize that when you're pregnant, particularly during COVID season. Please don't downplay the value of sleep, not just in pregnancy, but in your health. We need sleep. So please consider maximizing your sleep while you're pregnant. Number six, eating clean. What does this mean? High protein, low carbs. Think like the Mediterranean diet. If you're looking for um, 
If you're looking for nutrition advice on like recipes and things like that, pretty much anything in the Mediterranean diet while you're pregnant will be good for you. Adding probiotics to your Mediterranean diet style uh, meals will help too. So things like kimchi or sauerkraut, um, adding those daily can be really helpful. Now, I shouldn't have to tell you because you're pregnant that you need to also consider discontinuing smoking and of course alcohol use while you're pregnant. During COVID, alcohol use has actually increased 500% in Americans. And as you'll hear in a little while, alcohol use um, can actually um, affect your B vitamins, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. And we really want you to not do that when you're pregnant for their, you know, for your own baby's reasons. But discontinue smoking and alcohol use if you haven't already. Um, and then another thing to know, going back to eating clean, Poor nutrition predisposes people to infections more easily. Um, so it's really important that you have good nutrition to start. It's great if you're watching this video and you're already COVID positive and you know your diet hasn't been good, start today. But if you haven't gotten COVID yet or you're still considering trying to get pregnant, start focusing on your nutrition. It will make a difference. In fact, as midwives, our state rules require us to discuss nutrition at every prenatal appointment with our clients. I'm not sure any physicians do that, but as midwives, we do. That's how important it is to your pregnancy. One of the things I'm going to be reading straight off the screen for this one, um, because I found it was really important. It says, you can think of the immune system as an army. The job of the immune system is protect the body, but if the immune system army isn't well regulated, it can overreact and actually cause more damage. The overreaction is what oftentimes happens with COVID and is referred to as cytokine storm. Forgive me if I'm saying that wrong. I've never actually heard that word out loud, but I'm gonna call it cytokine storm. Cytokines are inflammatory molecules released by immune cells, and they're like the weapons of the immune system's army. So if your immune system is the army, hang on, I lost my spot. If your immune system cells are the soldiers, they're the army, and cytokines are the guns and the grenades. In a poorly regulated immune system, the cytokine storm in induced by COVID causes inflammation in the body, just like little grenades being tossed around into your body. And this is what causes the worst outcomes in COVID patients um, and ultimately death. And so general immune system preparations for pregnancy are so important, not just because of COVID, but also because you are raising a tiny little human life and we want you to feel good while you're doing it. So again, water, exercise, get your vitamin D levels checked, ask your doctor um, or your midwife to do that. Whole food prenatals, maximize your sleep and eat very clean. Next. Okay. But here you are watching this video you know that you have COVID or you've tested positive recently, so you're about to have it. Now what? Well, what do you need to know when you're pregnant? Now, first of all, I'm a huge fan of fever and there's lots of benefits to running fever when you have a disease. However, you're baking a tiny little human in your body and fever is not as beneficial to your baby as it is to you. Therefore, despite what I would tell you if you weren't pregnant, when you are pregnant, it's important to keep your fever down. Anytime you run 100.4, you need to take Tylenol to get your fever down. If after two hours you haven't been able to get your fever down, you may need to call your doctor or midwife. We might need to do some other things. We really don't want you to run fever uh, while you're pregnant. Number two, stay hydrated. Um, hydration, again, not just as a preventative, but when you're sick, one of the worst things you can ha have happen to you is dehydration. It makes your body hurt so much worse. Nothing is functioning properly. And on top of that, while you're pregnant, you've got amniotic fluid and a baby to think about. So if you have to set an alarm or ask your partner to help encourage you to be drinking more water while you're, pre uh, while you're sick with COVID, it's really, really important to stay on top of your hydration. Number three would be rest. Now, uh, you've heard about COVID fatigue and the desire to rest. But on the other hand, I also want you to move. So there's going to be a good healthy balance between resting when you have COVID and you're pregnant and moving when you have COVID and you're pregnant. Rest is what you're going to be doing the majority of the time. And what I mean by rest is 
you shouldn't be the one running around taking care of your toddlers or doing all of the laundry and all of the dishes while you're sick. Your body should be at rest when you have the opportunity. However, keeping your body actively moving, for, for example, exercise, light, light exercise can be really helpful in keeping everything flowing, keeping your lung capacity up while you're dealing with COVID. Um, and of course, if you can exercise outside, that'd be a little extra boost of vitamin D. So I had COVID recently. I was deliberate that every time I got on the phone, I was going to walk my neighborhood. And I walked an average of four to seven miles a day. Now, I'm not pregnant, so I realize that that's different. I also don't have toddlers at home to keep up with. But four to seven miles a day is what kept my lung function up. And it actually helped me feel really good. When I wasn't walking, I was resting. So keep that in mind. Nourishing yourself, number four. So you're pregnant. You have COVID, and the last thing you want to do is cook. I know because I just had it. It's the last thing on your mind. But the types of food you eat when you have COVID are so important to your health. Not just pregnant, but also because you have COVID. So nourishing yourself. If you don't have the energy to cook, it might be nice to have someone go out and buy juices for you. Um, fresh pressed juice, by the way, you know, from one of the local smoothie places that presses juice. Nourishing yourself in pre in, uh, with, during COVID means when you eat, be deliberate about your eating. Um, so uh, again, fresh pressed juices, don't eat processed foods. And look, if you lose your taste of sense and smell like I did, it's really hard to want to eat. Nothing tastes good. There's no benefit. There's no reward there. But it's really important that you stay on top of your nutrition during that time. Um, high protein, again, think Mediterranean diet. High protein, low carb. So what else can we do to help when we have COVID? Um, and that's really what the majority of today's talk is going to be on. I'm going to be talking about a list of supplements um, that I'm going to recommend that are all backed by evidence to give you some support, and they all are safe for pregnancy. I'm also going to tap into what those have to do with lactation. You're sick. Now what? Let's start with vitamin C, because you're all probably very familiar with vitamin C. This was the vitamin C supplement I took when I had COVID. I ate it like candy, even though I couldn't taste it. 500 milligrams of vitamin C along with bioflavonoids, and I'm going to go ahead and post a link to that in the description below. At home, you might have emergency or something along those sorts. That's fine, too. Um, I've also recently heard about liposomal vitamin C, which if you have some of that at home, you're welcome to take that as well. But vitamin C is a water-soluble vitamin that cannot be stored, and therefore you must take it in fresh and daily in your diet. Now, I just talked about a bunch of supplements, but believe it or not, as much as these supplements are great, ingesting vitamin C from food actually raises your vitamin C levels in your blood better than taking supplements. So we could go back to fresh pet pressed juice or even rose hips is something you can add to any tea. It's like a medicinal uh, herb that you can add to your tea full of vitamin C. The thing about vitamin C is it doesn't hold up well when it's cooked. So if you love uh, vegetables only when they're cooked, you can't count on those for your vitamin C sources. You really need to be eating them raw. The World Health Organization does not recommend additional vitamin C in pregnancy because it believe, they believe that we get enough in our diet. Now, it's true. The majority of us are getting an ample amount of vitamin C in our diet. However, when we're sick, vitamin C levels in our diet are actually depleted, and it's important that we get more vitamin C. So during pregnancy, the recommended daily allowance is about 85 milligrams, and during lactation, it's about 120 milligrams. Y'all, that's nothing. We need way more vitamin C than that. Like I said, this is 500 um, milligrams a day, and I took a lot of it. Now, the upper limit when you're pregnant, they say, should be between 1,800 and 2,000 milligrams a day when you're pregnant or lactating. You have to keep in mind, though, that there's really low risk of toxicity with vitamin C. You can take a lot of it, and it's really not going to be harmful for your body. Um, but because you're pregnant, we don't want to be doing things that aren't backed by evidence. And so I'm going to uh, limit the recommended amount of vitamin C that I'm recommending today. Um, just because of that. But keep in mind, this is short term. So if you want to do 2000 milligrams a day while you're pregnant or lactating with COVID, I totally have found evidence that that would be fine. 
What about breastfeeding? Breast milk normally has two times the amount of vitamin C than formula does. And taking vitamin C while you're breastfeeding actually increases the vitamin C supply in your breast milk to your baby. So if you have COVID in your house and you're breastfeeding, taking extra vitamin C can pass that extra vitamin C along to your baby's immune system because you're not going to be dosing in a young baby with vitamin C by mouth. You're going to be dosing them through the breast milk. Something else to consider, too, is if you happen to be a smoker, you need more vitamin C than the average person. So everything I'm saying in these numbers, I want you to increase it if you do smoke. Now, what does vitamin C have to do with COVID? Um, I'm going to be reading off my screen for a lot of these because there's no way I can remember all of these studies. But let's start with vitamin C and COVID. There were several studies that I found that supported the evidence of using vitamin C when you have COVID and reducing the severity and the duration of your symptoms. The first one that I read quite a bit about was along with zinc, vitamin C and zinc increase the rate of recovery by 70%, reducing symptoms of infection in patients 30%, especially those who had the longest duration of symptoms. So for example, people who were on average very ill for six, point, six to seven days were down to about five days of illness. Having just had COVID, those few days make a difference. My body hurt like something fierce. So those days make a difference and they are st statistically significant. You start vitamin C, especially in these studies, it was started immediately upon the appearance of the first symptoms or the positive test without symptoms yet. The thing about vitamin C is that you need to take small doses frequently to build it up in the system. So, you know, if I ate 10 of these in a day, it won't have the same effect. In fact, it'll have very little effect as compared to eating 10 of them, uh, one of them 10 times a day. And so vitamin C, when you have too much in your body, it's excreted out through your urine, typically in about 30 minutes. So it's really important that you take small doses frequently throughout the day, which I'm gonna talk about again at the end of this video. Vitamin C shortens respiratory infections by 8% in adults and 18% in children with as little as one gram a day. Um, so if you have uh, COVID at home and you're worried about your newborn, take vitamin C while you're breastfeeding. It can prevent bacterial infections. Pneumonia is common in patients suffering from vitamin C deficiency. In fact, one third of ICU patients had low vitamin C levels in the COVID study. Another small study said that of 18 ICU COVID patients, 17 of them had undetectable vitamin C levels. And another study said that non-survivors, so people who died from COVID, had half of the plasma level of vitamin C than survivors. I have no idea if they're supplementing with vitamins in the hospital for those COVID patients, but if there's anything that you take from this video, when you're ill, your vitamin C needs to be increased because your body is depleting it faster. Um, by taking vitamin C, if you happen to be hospitalized with COVID, um, it shortens your ICU stay by 8% and shortens the likelihood of needing mechanical, mechanical ventilation. This is uh, being intubated. Another study said that vitamin C reduced mortality in COVID patients by 78% and reduced the likelihood of acute respiratory distress by 35% during only four days of taking vitamin C. This is just one of the supplements. So how much vitamin C do you need? I'd like you to take 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams spaced out throughout the day. When you're infected, you can take up to 3,000 milligrams, but be sure to take it with zinc. So these are my two go-tos during pregnancy. Uh, no, I'm not pregnant. These are my two go-tos during COVID. Speaking of zinc. Zinc deficiency is actually way more common than people realize it is. 82% of women are deficient in zinc, particularly vegans, vegetarians, pregnant women, or people who drink alcohol. In pregnancy, it's even more common because of the zinc needs of the baby growing inside of you. And so the recommended daily allowance for zinc 12 milligrams when you're pregnant, 13 milligrams when you're lactating. But keep in mind, y'all, zinc toxicity is possible. And if you're watching this video and you're pregnant, I do not want you overdosing on zinc. 
Um, there was some research that came out when COVID first happened that like, don't quote me, but I think it was like 50 milligrams of zinc a day. First of all, you probably can't tolerate that. Most of us start to get stomach upset or even nausea or vomiting with high levels of zinc supplementing. But second, you can have zinc toxicity. So please don't overdose on zinc. Um, just don't overdose on zinc. Um, okay, breast milk. Breast milk provides adequate amounts of zinc for your baby for four to six months. Um, so if you have COVID at home and you're breastfeeding, you can know that the first six months of life, your baby is being uh, properly given the amount of zinc that they need. And zinc is best absorbed through a lozenge rather than swallowing a pill, which is why I personally prefer Zycam over, uh, can you see it? There we go. I personally prefer Zycam over zinc by mouth. This is less likely to give you stomach upset and it's recommended multiple times throughout the day instead of just like a one-time dose. What does zinc have to do with COVID? Well, besides the vitamin C link that we just talked about, the association between zinc deficiency and worse outcomes of respiratory viral, viral infections has been established, which means even if it's not COVID, even if it's the flu or some other kind of respiratory disease such as RSV, for example, a zinc deficiency does worsen your outcomes. Zinc also acts on the immune system by reducing the virus's ability to multiply. So you might have a COVID diagnosis, but once you start taking these supplements, it may not be able to go rampant in your body. Combined with vitamin C, zinc has been proven to shorten duration of cold symptoms by 33%. And again, having had COVID recently, those few days make a difference. COVID hurts. So vitamin C along with zinc has been shown to help. So I would take these together. If you have questions about vitamin C or zinc, go ahead and post them in the comments. I'm going to get to those at the end. But in the meantime, I want to move on to vitamin D. I'm going to spend a little bit time on vitamin D than the other supplements because vitamin D in pregnancy and breastfeeding is so important. And I really want you guys to make sure that you have a good, adequate vitamin D level. So vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin which means it stays in your fat in your body, but um, overdose is possible if you take it by mouth. Vitamin D can be taken by mouth or the easiest way to get it is sunlight exposure. Um, you can sit in the sun up to 30 minutes a day with your arms, your face, your hands, and your legs uncovered without sunscreen, and your body will convert that into vitamin D. However, the location of where you live matters. So in South Louisiana, it's easy for us to get vitamin D. But if you're living up north, that might be a little bit uh, harder. Um, it takes days to convert vitamin D from the sun compared to taking it by mouth, which you could get it a lot quicker. It is not absorbed through glass. So if you think that sitting in your car, you're getting ample amounts of vitamin D or sitting in a window, sunning in a window, that does not count. Vitamin D must be direct sun to skin contact. Clouds won't affect it, but or as much anyway, but a, a window will. So you cannot get vitamin D through sunning in a window. Another thing to consider is your skin color matters. So um, African-American women, are th it takes three times longer for them to absorb vitamin D from the sun. And you can still burn your skin in that time. And so supplementing by mouth can sometimes be helpful. Another thing is that obese people are less likely to have vitamin D and it takes longer uh, vitamin D, healthy vitamin D levels. And it does take longer for them to convert the sunlight to vitamin D as well. So supplementing is the way to help. Um, vitamin D. So you're gonna ask your doctor or your midwife to check your vitamin D levels. We're looking for anything over 50. The test results will say that anything in the 30s is normal and average, but we really want you above 50. Levels of 50 are adequate for most people. The Vitamin D Council recommends 40 to 80. 80 is good, but once you start getting up into the, hun uh, the 100, now we have a problem, that's too much vitamin D. 125 would be a cause for concern. So again, this isn't a supplement that you should just go heavy dosing yourself because every website on the internet is saying that vitamin D is good for COVID. It's important that you know where you stand and where you started from. Breast milk also has low levels of vitamin D. 
So the vitamin D in your blood is not a good reflection on what's available in your breast milk. I found that very interesting. It's actually been something I've always struggled with as a midwife is I don't feel like anything in our design is a mistake. And so how is it that breast milk can be so low in vitamin D? Well, the kicker, we're supposed to be outside in the sunlight. If you're breastfeeding, you either need to be supplementing your baby with 400 IUs of vitamin D3 each day, or an alternative is supplementing yourself with 6,400 IUs of vitamin D a day. Studies have shown that supplementing the breastfeeding mother with 6,400 IUs of vitamin D provides adequate vitamin D for the baby and you don't have to give them the supplement instead. Now the re uh, recommended daily allowance for vitamin D in pregnancy is 600 IUs. Because I test most of my moms, almost all of my moms are on 2,000 to 4,000 IUs of vitamin D a day. So that is the recommended um, amount uh, in pregnancy. The studies on vitamin D, there's so many studies that show the risks of vitamin D deficiency, but there's actually very few studies on the benefits um, of vitamin D, uh, how much to take. And so the studies currently say 2,000 to 4,000 is safe. Upper limits for people with vitamin D deficiency is likely safe, but we just don't have the evidence to prove it just yet. So I really want you guys to play it safe and stay at 4,000 or below. Symptoms of vitamin D deficiency. Fatigue. Which pregnant woman doesn't have fatigue in the first trimester? Okay, well, did you have fatigue before you were pregnant? Do you have fatigue in your second and third trimester? Those are things to consider. Muscle weakness, joint pain, depression. Those are symptoms of vitamin D deficiency. Oh, and if you're pregnant, also repetitive bacterial vaginosis. So even prior to pregnancy, really, vitamin D deficiency is directly linked to frequent bacterial vaginosis infections. So if you find yourself with that, then you need to be supplementing vitamin D. Other benefits of adequate vitamin D in pregnancy. Lowers your risk of preeclampsia. Lowers your risk of gestational diabetes. In fact, vitamin D deficiency diagnosed in the first trimester is directly linked to gestational diabetes in pregnancy. So it's important that we get those levels under control. Vitamin D also lowers the risk of preterm delivery. Low vitamin D, again, is linked to uh, recurring uh, bacterial vaginosis. Vitamin D enhances fertility and fertility treatments, and it actually lowers the risk of miscarrying. In fact, levels lower than 20. Um, vitamin D is linked with two times a greater odd of miscarrying in the first trimester. Infertile women with PCOS likely have vitamin D deficiency. So if your doctor hasn't checked your vitamin D levels yet and you're dealing with infertility, you need to have those levels checked. Having adequate vitamin D also lowers the risk of having a small for gestational age baby, meaning a baby too small for how pregnant you are. It's also directly linked to uh, perinatal mood disorders. So pregnant and postpartum depression, anxiety, those kind of things. It's called PMADS is another name for it. First time moms with a vitamin D deficiency are four times more likely to have a C-section. That I did not know until I researched this. So if you're a first time mom, have your vitamin D levels checked. Um, adequate vitamin D levels, as you can see, are very important to your health. But also, what about your baby's health while you're pregnant? Well, mothers with adequate vitamin D levels are less likely to have children with type 1 diabetes. Their children are less likely to have asthma. They're also less likely to have glucose instability at their birth. They also, vitamin D deficiency uh, for the mother has been linked to improper bone development for children all the way up to the age of nine, dental cavities, and for whatever reason, schizophrenia. I did not even know childhood schizophrenia was a thing, so now we know. Um, as a side note, because we're all women here, vitamin D deficient women who have breast cancer are 73% more likely to die within 10 years of their diagnosis. So it's really important as a woman to make sure your vitamin D levels are good. Again, preferably at or above 50, not 30, despite the recommendations.
Now, what about your baby? The American Academy of Pediatrics does not recommend us sunning your baby. So I would recommend that if you're breastfeeding, go ahead and supplement yourself with vitamin D, 6,400 units a day. Now, I love vitamin D. I know I've talked a lot about it, but let's talk about what vitamin D has to do with COVID. Vitamin D deficient people are more likely to not only get COVID, but they're more likely to have a worse outcome and more likely to need ICU compared to people who have normal vitamin D levels. Um, a vitamin D level greater than 30 significantly decreases the severity of outcomes and the odds of death if you do contract COVID. In Switzerland, a study said that vitamin D supplements would be useful in the treatment of COVID, preventing more severe symptoms, such as reducing the presence of the virus in the upper respiratory tract and making it less infectious to others. Supplementing vitamin D has been found to decrease respiratory infections, especially for people who had vitamin D deficiency. So it's not too late. If you have your levels checked and they're too low, you can still start supplementing now and improve your outcomes. Vitamin D deficiency is linked to an increase in upper respiratory infections and the likelihood that you would have those infections. You are 51.5% less likely to die from COVID if your vitamin D levels are greater than 30. I think that tells a lot for vitamin D. Beneficial for you when you're pregnant, when you're a woman, and when you have COVID. So what's the dosage? Um, depending on your levels, I, again, you're going to have your midwife or your doctor check your levels, two to 4,000 units a day if your levels are low or if you're infected with COVID. As a preventative, your um, prenatal vitamin likely has 400 to 600 units a day. Um, that's never enough unless you have high levels. When you're breastfeeding, again, 6,400 units a day to pass it on to your baby or please supplement your baby if you're not breastfeeding, making sure your baby's getting 400 units a day. Um, Weston A. Price, just as a side note, one more thing about vitamin D before I move on. Weston A. Price said, he did a study on 10,000 infants, 2,000 units a day in the first year of life for newborns eradicated type 1 diabetes for 30 years. I thought that was pretty amazing. Vitamin D is awesome. So what vitamin D I recommend is, again, Garden of Life, one of my favorites. Um, this is 5,000 units because I'm not pregnant but you're pregnant, so you're going to want to do two to 4,000 units. They have those too. I'm going to list those in the comments below. One of the things I love about Garden of Life is not just vitamin D in here. They also have probiotics and enzymes and fruits and vegetables. And we already talked about how vitamin C is best absorbed through fruits and vegetables more than supplements. So having this is another little extra boost uh, for your immune system. Again, questions about vitamin D, post them in the comments below. Um, we are about halfway through. I hope you're hanging in there with me. Let's keep moving forward. L-lysine. You're probably familiar with L-lysine for cold sores, but actually L-lysine is a massive immune system support for your body that fights viruses. Herpes, oral, um, chicken pox, and shingles have been known to be uh, affected by L-lysine. L-lysine is an amino acid. It's an essential amino acid, which means that you have to absorb it from food. Your body doesn't make it. It's a long track record for safety. It's safe for pregnancy, and it has other benefits you may not have known about, such as reducing cortisol levels, which affects your anxiety and your stress, reduces your blood pressure, treats and prevents cold sores, Improves calcium absorption, which you need in your third trimester. Increase a calcium as your baby's making bone now. Um, and it's part of the collagen making process, which speeds wound healing, which can be really beneficial postpartum. I actually stumbled across L-lysine being useful in COVID on accident and actually found the information to be really neat. Um, during pregnancy, we recommend L-lysine in my midwifery practice for oral herpes or cold sore outbreak prevention and management. Um, and we actually discovered that you need higher doses of L-lysine in, in your third trimester than previously thought. Um, so it's something to consider. So what does L-lysine have to do with COVID? Well, first of all, to understand the benefits of L-lysine, you have to understand L-arginine. L-lysine and L-arginine are pretty much uh, like opposing when it comes to uh, disease. L-lysine is reported to halt 
COVID. It reduces your titers. When I say halt, I mean the studies have shown it actually stops COVID from continuing to replicate. Arginine, on the other hand, increases that. So um, one of the things you can do when you're pregnant is increase your L-lysine and decrease your L-arginine. One of the things that have L-arginine in it is coffee. In one of the studies that I found, one of the long-term, or we call it long-haul COVID, one of the markers for that was coffee drinkers. If you drank coffee, you were not only more likely to have COVID symptoms, but you are more likely to have long haul COVID because it's found in arginine. Arginine is also found in uh, chocolate and nuts. So one study was of New York physicians who decided to study arginine and lysine. But instead of giving lysine, they decided to give an enzyme that reduces arginine. And the results were awesome. But in the Dominican Republic, they ended up doing a study on just giving lysine. And lysine is something you can buy over the counter. Arginine enzyme reductors are not something I think you can find, not that I'm aware of anyway. So in the study in the Dominican Republic, eight out of 10 patients who got COVID, 70% reduction in symptoms in the first two days. Almost none of them had fever past 24 hours of starting the supplement. And the treatment for the group was two days. Um, they recovered in two days instead of weeks. Hospitalized COVID patients. So they came to the hospital and now they already have COVID and they're already very sick. Let's go ahead and give them lysine now. They were discharged after three days of started lysine. And those um, COVID sick patients who fasted during those three days, because let's face it, when you have COVID, you really don't want to eat and you don't feel good. Those who fasted recovered even faster than that. And they're assuming that's because they're not consuming arginine rich foods. Again, though, coffee was the most common factor along COVID-19 long-term sufferers. So if you have COVID, stop drinking coffee which is awful to say, as if you don't already have enough going on in your body. How much L-lysine to take when you're pregnant and dealing with COVID? Well, it looks like 1,500 milligrams is considered safe. I've read some things that say even up to 3,000 uh, 3, milligrams a day is safe. Um, I have been just doing 1,000 milligrams twice a day, an hour before meals, and um, that would totally be fine for you guys to do as well while you're pregnant or breastfeeding. Another thing about L-lysine is you need to stay on it for two weeks or more, and you need to continue to follow the diet restrictions for three weeks and keep your activity level at a low. One of the things about the study in the Dominican Republic they found is not only was coffee related to, you know, long-term COVID, but also people who went back to their normal, normal physical activity too soon had another plummet in their, uh, in their symptoms. They started feeling bad again. The good news is that they started taking the lysine again and they started feeling better. But if you're going to go ahead and go through with this, then it's really important that you take your lysine daily for at least two to three weeks. Do not take more than 3,000 milligrams of lysine a day, not because you're pregnant, but because one of the studies found that taking too much lysine actually worsens your cough. It doesn't worsen your outcomes, but it does worsen your cough. So try and stay below 3,000. While you're taking lysine, you should be taking a B-complex vitamin. The reason why is symptoms of COVID are also very similar to symptoms of B1 or thi uh, thiamine, I think is how you say it, B1 deficiency. A B1 deficiency mimics flu-like symptoms. Low B1, you can have fever, diarrhea, vomiting, shortness of breath. In fact, having proper B1 improves your breathing. Also, alcohol, sugar, coffee, and tea all interfere with your B1 absorption. Um, so, if you're drinking coffee, we talked about arginine. Well, if you're low on uh, your B vitamins, you're also going to have worse, worse symptoms. B complex vitamins play a vital role in your immune system function and reduce, reduce the length of stay in a hospital. Um, 
it's quite feasible that B vitamins could contribute to preventing worsening COVID symptoms. And that's pretty much what the articles that I came across was. There's not a whole lot of studies on B and COVID, but there's a lot of people who are hypothesizing that B vitamins can reduce your symptoms of COVID. Again, I recommend Garden of Life because they not only have all of the B vitamins in a raw whole food form, but also they have probiotics, enzymes, fruit, and vegetables. So take both of these at the same time, L-lysine and B vitamins. Two more, and then we're going to wrap it up. Echinacea. Echinacea is one of the longest studied herbs in America. I was taught in my midwifery education that echinacea was not something that pregnant women were supposed to take because it could cause contractions. But in researching for this video, I did not find that anywhere. In fact, if anything, I found lots of research that confirms that echinacea is safe in pregnancy for short periods of time. Echinacea works by boosting your white blood, blood cells, and it shortens the durations of colds and other upper respiratory infections and reduces the likelihood that you would get a secondary infection. For example, if you have COVID and now you have uh, bacterial pneumonia, bacterial pneumonia would be the secondary infection. My son had COVID. He got an ear infection. That would be a secondary infection. Echinacea reduces the likelihood that you would get that. It also reduces the common cold by one and a half days and less in severity. Another name for the common cold, uh, there are symptoms, there are types of the common cold, I'm sorry, not common cold, but the cold called coronavirus, just not COVID-19. Helps tremendously with upper respiratory. In fact, there was a study that showed that people who take echinacea who have asthma have almost the same benefits as taking medication for their asthma because it dilates their bronchial. So it's also anti-inflammatory. So it's really beneficial if you're having shortness of breath from COVID to take echinacea. Another study in 2009 showed that echinacea um, was very efficient in attacking the swine flu in a test tube um, and that they would recommend it for that. Also, as a side note, if you're breastfeeding, echinacea can be used to treat mastitis, which that would be so helpful. Now, keep in mind, there are currently no studies on echinacea and COVID, but there are lots of information about um, hypothesizing that based on the past studies on echinacea, it should be beneficial to help us fight COVID. But even if it's not, it will be beneficial to helping you feel like you can breathe better when you have COVID. Um, there is a study happening now, by the way, whether or not you're pregnant. Um, I have a link. I'm going to post it in the description. There is a study happening right now that they started just a few days ago that shows they're trying to find out if echinacea can improve disease with clients who don't require hospital uh, hospitalization for COVID. So if you're interested in participating in that study, if you're COVID positive, um, go ahead and find that in the description. I was actually thinking about doing it because I took echinacea uh, when I had COVID. So what's the dosage? First of all, you need the root of the echinacea plant, not any of the other things. So like traditional medicinals, which is one of my favorite herbal teas, their root in their echinacea plus was very small compared to like the flower. So you're really going to have to go on Amazon and order echinacea root and steep it and make a tea out of it the same way you're probably making your red raspberry leaf tea. You can also do capsules or uh, a liquid tincture. But the dosage would be 1,500 milligrams twice a day of the root. All right, last one, probiotics. This, I saved it for last because I just was most fascinated about this. Came across it by accident like I did with L-lysine and the information's amazing. Probiotics are the good bacteria that makes up our gut and our immune system health. And recently studies have been coming out more and more about the benefits of probiotics. Probiotics are starting to be understood in a way similar to antibiotics in that a specific strain targets specific actions. Well, the study that I found on probiotics demonstrated that the use of probiotics was associated with a shorter time of clinical improvements for hospitalized COVID patients with fever, their hospital stay, and how long they were contagious. 
Fever went from four days down to one day. The viral shedding, meaning how long they were contagious, they went from being contagious for six days down to one to three days. And the hospital stay, this was the most amazing. The hospital stay for the non-probiotic group was five days or more, but with the probiotic group, one day. Amazing. Um, the probiotic treatment that they gave in the study, it was uh, 630 milligrams twice a day of three strains of probiotics. The people in the study without the probiotics were more likely to need antibiotics, steroids, the um, COVID antibody infusion, oxygen therapy, and way more likely to end up in ICU. Isn't that cool? Something so simple. So one of the things that I did upon coming uh, about, oh my goodness, y'all, I have COVID, post-COVID brain fog, probably because I'm still drinking coffee. Um, one of the things that I did during COVID was take shots of probiotic rich foods um, to help with the symptoms. So let's talk about a day in the pregnant life of a COVID mama. This is where you should be getting your sheet of paper and a pen. In the morning, right when you wake up, your first thing you should be taking is 1,000 milligrams of L-lysine an hour prior to eating, along with a big cup of either spring water or reverse osmosis water with trace minerals, a shot of probiotics, and skip your coffee. Skip your coffee. At least for a couple of days, skip your coffee. After about an hour, once that's settled, you want to be eating a high-protein Mediterranean-style breakfast. Um, along with taking your prenatal vitamin, a B-complex vitamin, 500 milligrams of vitamin C, and your Zycam. I'm going to post this in the comments and in the description, so if you missed it, um, it'll be there. Again, I consider myself an aggressive healer. I realize this is a lot of supplements, but we're dealing with COVID here, and you're pregnant. It's important that you stay on top of your health. So I know it's a lot, but if you break it up into small sections, I think it'll be easier. Two hours after breakfast, I want you to take another 500 to 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C. Drink a cup of echinacea root tea and take another Zycam. At lunch, I want you to do a high protein lunch. Yes, I know you don't want to eat, but you really need to. If you're not going to eat, get some fresh pressed juice so you can get some nutrition in your body. And instead of taking these vitamin C supplements, guys, remember you can add rose hips to your, uh, to your echinacea tea, or you can have an orange, a red bell pepper, something, some vitamin C rich food. Okay, so lunch, high protein lunch. And then after that, I want you to take a second B complex vitamin, your vitamin D, 500 milligrams of vitamin C, your prenatals, and another shot of probiotics. This could be sauerkraut, kimchi, uh, if I'm pronouncing it right, kefir or kefir soda, um, a, a probiotic-enriched yogurt, something like that. Then for dinner, 1,000 milligrams of L-lysine an hour prior to dinner, along with your big cup of water and a probiotic shot. Let that sit for a good hour. Then I want you to have a high protein dinner or a nutritious, uh, a nutritious liquid dinner. So for example, um, a nutritious homemade bone broth. Um, oh my gosh, I cannot think of the word. Chicken soup, thank you. A, bone, a chicken soup bone broth, something like that for dinner would be fine. But with your high protein dinner, I want you to do another 500 milligrams of vitamin C with your Zycam. And then one more time, two hours after dinner, so right before bed, you're gonna do 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C and a cup of Echinacea tea with your Zycam. I know it's a lot, but this regimen, these supplements, which are all natural, easy to find, very affordable, can help you feel better, reduce the duration of your illness, reduce the likelihood of you infecting others, and keep you out of the hospital. 
So let's do it. Okay. All right. So I'm taking questions. Let me open up my phone and see if anybody has any questions. Okay. Uh, Meredith asked if I'll be saving this live. Yes, it will be online for a day and I will be posting this on YouTube. Um, Candace, thank you for your kind comment. She says the ti these tips are good for everyone, especially for those who are pregnant. Um, let's see. Can you get your zinc levels tested? That is a great question. And honestly, Melissa, I don't have an answer for that. I, I'm assuming yes, because the study said that zinc deficiency is a thing, but that does not mean that it's cost effective. Um, I would just recommend you go ahead and supplement with zinc. Taking your recommended dosage of zinc daily is not going to give you toxicity. Let me go back what that dosage was. Your zinc dosage in pregnancy is 12 milligrams and in lactating, it's 13 milligrams. Um, the upper limit that you can take of zinc a day without toxicity would be 34 to 40 milligrams. Lately, I've been seeing them sold in 50 milligrams. The chances of you keeping that down are probably pretty slim. Even at 12 milligrams, a lot of my clients complain of vomiting with zinc. So that's why I prefer Zycam. It's a lozenge which when you use a lozenge, zinc is more easily absorbed um, into the body and it's a lot less harsh on your stomach. Zinc dosage trying to conceive. It, I would go ahead and dose yourself like you're pregnant, 12 milligrams a day. Um, Anne said she learned about L-lysine today. I did too. I thought that was so cool. And I took L-lysine when I had um, COVID. In fact, I'm still taking it. Um, and I can definitely tell a difference on the days I take the dose and the days that I was starting to forget my dose. Um, I thought that, that the L-lysine was probably the one that, and the probiotics were the ones that really surprised me the most. Um, okay, I think that's it for the questions. Um, if, I'm going to go ahead and be online for the next hour. So if you guys have any other questions, go ahead and post them in the comments. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a birth house mama, whether here in Lafayette or in Covington or a North Shore location, we are still taking clients even last minute, even late in pregnancy clients. I took one on this week, actually. So if you're interested in that, feel free to reach out. Consultations are free. Um, check us out on YouTube, YouTube slash Cajun Stork, where I have lots of other videos. Um, more than anything, I hope that you walked away from this feeling less frightened about COVID um, in your pregnancies and knowing that we can do something to keep ourselves in optimal health. And I hope that this information was helpful to you as it is to our midwifery clients. Thanks for watching everyone. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye.